What's up guys, it's Lefty here. In this video, I want to discuss some big misconceptions about sports betting. With so many people in sports betting fighting for attention, it's easy to forget that winning money betting sports is very hard. If you are new to sports betting, you might think everyone is winning with so many people claiming they win or all these different websites and platforms claiming their data or betting tools will help you win if you subscribe for a monthly fee. Truth is, and there's been studies that prove this or have reported this, that less than 1% of all sports bettors are what's considered consistently profitable long term. And I'll say that again so it sinks in. Less than 1% of sports bettors are able to consistently show profit over a large sample size of games bet. Of course, key words there are long, long term or large sample size because anyone who bets can win over a short period of time, like a week or a month or two. But that isn't enough time to show if it's just variance in luck or if it's due to having a real advantage over the sports books. But why is it so hard to win betting sports? Uh, another study done shows that the average sports bettors can win 50% of the games they pick. Obvious problem here is 50% isn't good enough to be profitable because it costs money to place a bet. 11 to win 10 to be exact on a standard minus 110 bet. Uh, so that's the first obstacle is winning enough to overcome the juice or VIG. But uh, when you combine that with some common bad betting habits like betting parlays, buying points in the wrong situation, incorrect bet sizing or over betting, uh, you really don't stand a chance at winning. Uh, there are just so many things you a better must do and avoid doing in order to be profitable over a large sample size of games. And some of these things have nothing to do with the sport or betting at all. It really, the just some people don't have the personality traits needed in order to win. Either they lack discipline and patience or, I don't know, like weak problem-solving skills or just aren't analytical thinkers. And these things are tough to learn because it's part of the human makeup. Uh, but possessing all these things still doesn't mean you'll win. Uh, it's so hard to win that I could give people winning bets, and if that person doesn't know how to manage risk or doesn't have the ability or resources to get the right numbers, they won't win, even if given winning plays. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by this because I have personal experience with it. Now, I won't say how or why, but I have access to the back end of some sportsbook accounts, which means I can see – Bets being made in real time by roughly 1,500 bettors on a couple different sports books. Uh, members of the Discord community know exactly what I'm talking about here. But uh, now, most of the bettors betting on these sports books that I have access to are just casual recreational bettors. But there's also a handful of very sharp accounts that crush specific sports or specific bet types within a sport. For example, WNBA is a sport that I'm able to see bets made by a very successful betting group that has beat the WNBA three out of the last four seasons. And that one season they didn't win. It was basically just like a break even season. I have alert notifications set up when this specific account places bets, but I've only had a single winning WMA season in the last four years. So how is that possible if I'm able to see the bets they make and they win, but I can't? There's two main reasons behind this. The first reason and probably the biggest factor is how time sensitive sports betting is. When a group like this bets, they're typically betting across many different sports books and it moves the line or it creates what's called steam. So if I'm not ready with my sportsbook accounts open on the WNBA screen, ready to fire within 10 or 20 seconds of getting the notification that they bet, I'll miss the number. And what I mean by this is if they bet Sparks Liberty under 162 and I'm only able to get under 160, uh, I'm now at risk of not winning a bet that they do. If it lands 160, I push, they win. 161, I'd lose, they would win. Or 162, I lose, they push. And keep in mind, this is assuming I'm able to try and bet the game within like 20 seconds of them betting. The longer the time between them betting and me betting, the bigger the line difference could be. Now, of course, most games, the number won't be a factor or land close to the total or spread. But over the span of a full season of a couple hundred bets, the number could be a factor in, say, 10 or 15 percent of bets on totals and maybe 20 percent on spreads. Uh, 
And it's not crazy for a WNBA total to move three or four points. Just look at the screen here from uh, games a couple nights ago, how much the total has uh, moved from open to close. Six-point move on Liberty in the Dream. Uh, Five-point adjustment on the total in Sun and Storm. Uh, if I'm copying these winning WNBA plays and getting a couple points worse than they bet it at, um, this can have a big impact on the year-end results, uh, especially if I start betting games that I miss completely by a couple minutes and the line moves more than just a couple points. Uh, you may have heard the phrase betting numbers, not teams, uh, which means if sharp winning bettors like a team at minus four, uh, it doesn't mean they like that same team at any number. <clears throat> um, that same team they like at minus four, at minus six, they could like the, the other team they're playing, basically, uh, especially in a sport like NFL, where a half point or a full point on the spread could be the difference between a bet or a no bet. Uh, so not getting the same number is the first reason why I couldn't win while getting winning bets. But uh, when you combine that with bad bet sizing or bad bankroll management, I had no chance. Uh, I'd make dumb decisions like, factoring in my own opinion into games too often and would bet a little more or less depending on my own opinion. And um, speaking of bankroll management, that's another big misconception. If um, you post it on, say, Twitter or Reddit or any public forum asking what the number one rule to help an average sports better win, I bet like 90% of the answers will come back with some sort of bankroll management or money management response. Uh, but the best bankroll management won't turn a losing better into a winning better. If you aren't making good bets, no amount of bankroll management will turn your results around. Um, now, it was important for me when I was copying the WNBA bet. So I'm not saying disregard bankroll management uh, uh, completely because for you and me, uh, bankroll management is important in order to win. But so are a ton of other things. And, you know, the less than 1% of those successful sports bettors, they're not following some strict unit distribution rules or bankroll management system. Uh, most are betting what they can, meaning the max allowed at many different sports books. Um, they're betting based on their edge. And if they feel like they have a big enough edge, they're trying to get as much money down on it as possible. And most times their problem is be not being able to bet enough. Uh, but more importantly, they're only betting when they believe they have an edge. Uh, you know, if it's a Thursday afternoon and there's only two daytime baseball games and the rest of the games are at night, most recreational or average bettors are going to try to find a reason to bet at least one of the day games just to have action. Winning bettors don't care what time the games are. Again, they're betting strictly based on their edge. And what does that mean exactly, their edge? Uh, well, you know, winning bettors are able to put a spread or price on teams in a matchup that they believe that their numbers are more accurate than the sports books, what they have listed. Um, an example of this is, say, if Mr. Sharp better goes through his process, runs his numbers, and the Rays-Pirates game, he comes up with Pirates as favorites of minus 119 on the money line. But the sports books have the Pirates listed at minus 102. Mr. Sharp has a perceived edge on the Pirates. If you just consistently bet um, your edge over a large enough sample size, you'll come out on top. But obviously the key is having a proven process that is able to price games more accurately than the sports books. Or, or I should say have a process that weighs certain factors more or less uh, than the sports books in market uh, does. But um, and really, that's how edges are found. There's tons of examples each year in each sport where a certain factor isn't being priced into the odds enough or is being priced in too much and bettors are able to take advantage of it. But one thing is for certain edges always dry up eventually. Uh, the sports book or the market in general um, always corrects itself. It's just a matter of time. So you always have to be looking ahead and finding weak spots. I think I'm going to stop here. Um, if you have any suggestions on videos you'd like me to do in the future, comment below. I'm working on NFL team previews now, but I might do a part two of that blackjack video I did. I'll link that in the top right-hand corner. Uh, I had a few people request a part two, but part one didn't really do so good as far as views. Uh, but I'm open to suggestions. I also want to revisit some older topics of videos I've done. Some of them are like two or three years old. I want to do updated ones. Uh, definitely need to upload videos more consistently. It's just so tough to find topics and even tougher to find time. 
Hopefully you found this video helpful or interesting. Until next time, good luck with your bets.